Deus is going with you. And because of that, all the Jericho walls will fall before you. All the Red Sea will dry up before you. I will see you up there. The next time you talk to me, you're talking about your promotion. About your exaltation. Because something good, something good is coming upon your life in Jesus' name. Almighty God, we thank you for this glorious day. Thank you because you started with us. And you are continuing with us. I will pray, Lord, as you are taking us away out of the bondage and oppression of Egypt. And you are taking us through the highway to the promised land. We pray, Lord, none of us will look back. None of us will turn back. None of us will draw back, but we pray that your presence will be with us all through the journey in Jesus' name. And all the need of the way, the supplies of the way, the necessities of the way. Oh Lord, we pray you will supply everyone in Jesus' name. You are our Savior already, you'll be our shepherd. You are God and our guide. And you are guiding us through until we get to that land. And Lord, we pray, we'll get to the land in Jesus' name. The temptations on the way, the trials on the way, the trouble on the way, the persecution in the way. Oh Lord, we pray, we'll not turn any of us back, but we'll strength and courage with our companion. We'll follow through to the end in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that you make us really follow through and we'll never turn back again. We'll never go back again. I will never look back to the things of the world anymore. I will pray that your word and your promise will be yes and amen in every life. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you very much. We can sit down. This coming year will be a wonderful year. It will be a fruitful year. It will be a year of breakthrough in Jesus' name. Every door that was closed before will be opened. And all the windows of heaven sealed up before. Everything is now open in Jesus' name. The Lord is telling us that the old year is going. Let the old sorrows go too. And all the old suffering, let it go. And all the old trauma, let everything go. Wipe away your tears because days of joy are coming before you. And the Lord will be our constant companion and he will lead us to the promised land in Jesus' name. Before I read the verse of scripture, we are going to start with, can I tell you something? I say, can I tell you something? Something you've been looking for in your life, you have looked and looked for years to come. Because the Lord is promising something good for you. Something good for you. Something will happen to you. You'll never, never, never forget. It is coming. It will come in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 12. Exodus chapter 3 verse 12. And he said, certainly I will be with thee. Isn't that wonderful? God called Moses. And Moses was doubting, can I be what God wants me to be? Can I do what God wants me to do? Can I approach Pharaoh the tyrant as God wants me to do? And the Lord said, certainly, without any shadow of doubt, I will be with you. And what comfort it should give Moses? And what comfort that should give you? That the creator of the heavens and the earth, and that the one that dries up the sea, and the one that breaks down the wall, and the one that provides manna for three million people for 40 years in the wilderness, and the one that stopped the sun in the sky, and the one that made the people of God to be able to overcome all their enemies, he said, I, the conquering one, I, the creator, I, the mighty one, I, the one that will never fail, I will be with you. In this coming year, the Lord might call you to face a Pharaoh 
or to face a Nebuchadnezzar or to face a herald and then you say, how oh, can I do that? I am weak, I'm a stammerer I am not eloquent, I'm not capable, I am incompetent the Lord is saying, certainly, certainly certainly, I will be with you. It may be that you think it's a place of danger a place of difficulty, a place where other people have tried and they have failed. And the Lord is calling you and he's saying, get up. And you go to that simply and say, Lord, but everybody I ever heard that went to that place, they went there and they failed. How am I going there? And the Lord is saying, certainly I will be with you. The Lord will be with you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Moses was still doubting. He was still wondering. Can it be? And how will it be? Look at Exodus chapter 4 verse 12 again. Exodus chapter 4 verse 12. Now therefore go. And I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. You know sometimes you feel. I don't even know what to say. How to begin? If they call me to question and they challenge me about the call I say I have. About the conviction I say I have. And about the direction I'm walking. What will I say? I don't know what to say. The Lord is saying, even when you don't know what to say, He will be with you. Certainly He will be with you. I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. Look at verse 15. And thou shalt speak unto him, even unto him, and put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth. I will teach you what ye shall you, the Lord will be with you. It's the companion that never fails and it will not fail. It's the companion that overcomes every difficulty and every challenge and mountains melt before him. Rivers dry up before him. Enemies flee before him. And as he says that, that all the enemies will flee before you, then there is nothing for you to fear. You are going into triumph. And you will conquer every foe and every enemy in Jesus' name. As you move out of this old year, and you're moving to the new year, this is the year the Lord said you'll be more than a conqueror. Because the great companion, the mighty companion, and the companion that never fails is going with you. And because of that, all the Jericho walls will fall before you. All the Red Sea will dry up before you. A river Jordan, even when the trouble of Jordan is overflowing, everything will dry up before you in Jesus' name. How can we be so sure and definite because of that companion that never, never, never fails? Well, look at Deuteronomy chapter 31. Deuteronomy chapter 31. I'm looking at verse 23. And he gave Joshua, the son of Nun, a charge, a commission. And said, be strong and of a good courage. And I'm telling you, in these days ahead, you will not be weak. I said, you will not be weak. You know, the race is not for the people who are weak. Their knees are weak. Their minds are weak. Their reasoning is weak. And, uh, you know, it's like their spirit is weak. And everything about them is weak. Even their utterance, even their language, even their communication. Everything is weak. Even their faith is weak. Their love is weak. And their patience is weak. Everything about them is weak. The race ahead of us is not for the weak. Because, you know, there are giants ahead. There are enemies ahead. And it will take people who are strong in faith. Who are strong in love, who are strong in conviction, who are strong in courage, who are strong in commitment for us to be able to face what's ahead of us. You'll be strong in Jesus' name. Be strong and of a good courage. And I remind you once again, I told you during the year there is a bad courage. There's a bad courage. You see a vehicle coming and say, I'm bold. And this vehicle is at top speed. And the vehicle is near. And then you jump in front of that vehicle. And you say, look at that man. He's bold. Bad courage. And then you climb on top of the roof. And there's a law of gravity. If you fall down, you will break your bones and die. And then you climb up there. And then you are demonstrating. See how courageous I am. That's bad courage. 
You see somebody carrying HIV AIDS and you say, hey, they told us not to get near such people, but come on, let us go and enjoy ourselves. That's bad courage. Be of good courage. The kind of courage that leads you from good to better. The kind of courage that leads you from better to best. And if in this coming year, the courage according to the word of God, not the courage of rebellion, not the courage of disobedience, the courage of obedience to the word of God. And you say, I don't care what the trial or the difficulty may be. I am courageous in the Lord. I'm going to be obedient to the word of the Lord. You'll go from good to better. You'll go from better to best. That's why the Lord is saying, be strong and be of good courage for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them and I will be with you. That's the promise again of that companion, the companion that never fails. We're looking at Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 5. There shall no man, any man, be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will never fail thee, and I will never, never forsake thee. The Lord is telling us that as we move on, in the new year, he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. When you, are, when you are walking through the fire, he'll be with you. And through the river, through the flood, he will be with you. He will never leave you, never forsake you until he has accomplished that. That he has promised unto you the companion that never, never, never fails. And looking at the message from three perspectives. Number one, the promise. Number two, the partnership. Number three, the purpose. Number one, the promise of divine companionship. The promise of divine companionship. Number two, partnership with the divine companion. Partnership with the divine companion. Think about that. If you could be in partnership with a rich man, you'll say, all my poverty is gone. If you are in, company, in companionship with a wise man, you say, all my foolishness is gone. If you are in companionship with an educated person, you say, all this consequence of my illiteracy is gone. If you are in companionship with a healer, you say, there will be no sickness in my life anymore, but with the divine companion. The almighty God himself, when he says, I'll be in companion with you, I'll stay with you, abide with you, I'll walk with you every step of the way. Divine companionship, the, the, the participation of the partnership with the divine companion. Number three, the purpose of divine companionship. What's the purpose of that companionship? As the Lord is saying, I'm going to stay with you. I'm going to abide with you. And I'm going to be walking with you till the end of the journey. What is the purpose of that divine companionship? Number one. What's number one? Tell me like a preacher. The promise of divine companionship. We're looking at Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. And let's see the promise of the Lord. The promise of the Lord to his own people. Remember they were going from the land of bondage into the land of freedom. They were going from the land of suffering into the land of sufficiency. They were going from the land where there was not enough for them to have. In the land where there was oppression and slavery. And now they were going to the land that is filled with milk and honey. And they needed companionship. And the Lord said, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to stay with you. And you're going to have my promise of divine companionship fulfilled in your life. Exodus chapter 33. Reading from verse 14 and verse 15. Exodus 33 verses 14 and 15. And he said, my presence shall go with thee. And I will give thee rest. We're going to rest. I said we're going to rest. And you know the years of the past of panic and restlessness and turmoil and torment. And the mind was not as rest. And the family was not at rest. And your soul was not at rest. And you're always agitated, always agitated. 
And I say, you know, and when you are, and you run and run, where are you running to? I don't even know where you're running to because you're just afraid. I cannot be here. Where will I be? And then you run to another place. This is not the place for me, Elta Skelter, but this coming year there's going to be rest. You know, there are people that cannot sleep at night because, you know, during the day all this happened and all that happened and all that happened. And when they are trying to sleep in the night, their mind is still working and looking at everything that happened during the day. But this coming year, there's going to be rest. I said there's going to be rest because the Lord said, my presence shall go with thee. And I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. I don't ever want to take a step in any direction without the presence of the Lord. How many people just, you know, just jump into a vehicle and they keep on moving? And it's the presence of the Lord with you. Moses said, Carry us not further, carry us not away from here, except your presence, your companionship is with us. Thank God that companionship is there. In Isaiah chapter 41, Isaiah chapter 41, I'm reading from verse 10. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, are you still afraid? I said, Are you still afraid? By the Red Sea, fear thou not. O the Amalekites, fear thou not. O the people that overpowered you in the past, when you didn't have companionship with the Lord, but now you have divine companionship. Don't fear the past enemies or the old enemies. They are paralyzed. I said they are impotent. They'll never be able to hurt or harm you in Jesus' name. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Will the Lord help you? When you get into need, when you get into problem, he says, I will help you. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. In Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2, Isaiah 43 verse 2, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Yeah. I will be with thee. Yeah. And you know, water, eh, water is a wonderful thing, but you need to understand, must be the right kind of water. There was the water of the flood, you don't want that. The water that drowns people, you don't want that. But it says, when you're passing through that flood, that water, that will be able to, that will drown all the people. It says, I will be with you. And then it says, you'll go through the rivers and it shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through, tell me the rest. The fire, the fire. Many people fear the fire. And they think that you know if you're passing through the water or you're passing through the fire, then you should be afraid. But the Lord is saying, that when you pass through the fire, I will be with you, and thou shalt not be burnt. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Give me a good amen there. The Lord is saying that he gives us a promise. And he says, no matter where we are, no matter where we go, no matter who we confront, is going to be with us, and they will be with us till the end of the journey in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 15. Jeremiah chapter 15. I'm reading to you from verse 20. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 20. And I will make thee unto this people a fence city, a fence, a fence brazen wall, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. I said they shall not prevail against thee. And you, you know the people that pray that the enemies will die? Why are they praying like that? It's because of fear. That's a prayer of fear. A prayer of fear. Not a prayer of fear. Do you see why they are saying that? Yes, they think that if those enemies are alive, those enemies will crush them, destroy them, kill them. And before the enemies kill them, they want the enemies to die. But he says, they will fight against you. But when you have the divine presence with you, they will not prevail over you. I said they will not prevail over you. 
If they are not going to prevail over you, why are you afraid of them? Why don't you just continue serving the Lord? And then you experience the fulfillment of the promise of the Lord in your life. And then you'll still stay secured and you'll stay with all the blessings of the Lord. What's recently said that they shall fight against you, but they shall not prevail. Look at verse 20, the latter part. For I am with thee. Praise the Lord. The Lord is telling us something that promise of He being with us is based on you being with the Lord. We're looking at Second Chronicles chapter 15. Second Chronicles chapter 15. And I'm reading there from verse 2. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 2. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you. Tell me the next thing. Why you be with him? The Lord is with you. While ye be with him. You see that condition? You know there are people that will feel that the Lord will be with us. Next year is going to be wonderful. Next year is going to be terrific. And the Lord is going to be with us whatever happens. Well, it's on the condition that you also remain with the Lord, that you be with the Lord. And then it says, and if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, what will he do? Tell me out loud. He will forsake you. I pray the Lord will not forsake you. You know, the children of Israel, they are the promise of God. The Lord was going to be with them. The Lord will not forsake them. The Lord will not abandon them. They should not fear at all. And then they forgot that that promise of divine companionship, that that promise of divine presence all the days of their lives, that it was based on the fact that they remained in the will of God. They remained in the watch of God. Let's look at Joshua chapter 7, reading from verse 11. Joshua chapter 7. We're looking at verse 11. Israel has sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of their corset sin, and have also stolen and dissembled also. And they have put it even among their own stock. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore. Sin came in and the Lord said, that's all. That's the end. Sin separates from God. If we're going to keep on enjoying the divine companionship, it requires obedience to the word of God. It requires righteousness. It requires that the barrier between man and God, which is sin, we take that barrier away. The Lord will be with us while we're with Him. But if we now go back into sin, into evil, then it says, I can no more be with you except you destroy the accursed sin from among you. Except you destroy. Destroy the accursed thing. What's that accursed thing that some people have held on to? And you know, in the past, that's what made the presence of God not to be with us. That's what made the promise of divine companionship not to be fulfilled. But I pray that in the coming year, we're going to stay close to the Lord. I said we're going to stay close to the Lord. We're not going to allow any sin, any evil, any iniquity, any transgression, any disobedience, any rebellion in our lives. So that the promise of the Lord that has given unto us, that it will be with us forever. So that that promise will be fulfilled in our lives in Jesus' name. Psalm 91, Psalm 91, I'm reading from verse 14. Psalm 91, verse 14. In Psalm 91 verse 14, because he has said his love upon me. You see that? That's, that's the reason why the divine companionship is there. Because he has said his love on me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. 
It says because we love him. Because we love his word. Because we love his standard. Because we love his truth. And because we love everything that he loves. It says it's on that basis. It's on that condition that the Lord will be with us. Look at verse 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. The Lord will answer our prayer. If we stay with him. If we reject sin. If we reject evil. It says, he will call upon me. I will answer him. I will be with him. That's the companionship again. The companionship again. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with what kind of life? Tell me out loud. With long life will I satisfy him. And then I will show him my salvation. That's the, re the reason for that is because of that divine companionship. And I pray the Lord will fulfill it in every life in Jesus' name. Number two now, partnership with, with the divine companion. Partnership with the divine companion. You see, when the Lord stays with you, when the Lord abides with you, and when the Lord gives a promise of divine companionship with you and with me, there is a result. There is a fruit of that. There's something that produces in your life, in my life, in our lives, in our church. In Genesis chapter 39, I'm reading verses 2 and 3. Genesis chapter 39, we're looking at verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. The Lord was with Joseph. What was the consequence of that? He was a prosperous man. The Lord was with Joseph. What was the result of that? He was a rich man. The Lord was with Joseph. What was the result of that? All his needs were provided. And the work that he did was made to succeed and to prosper. Because the Lord is God was with him. Look at verse 3. Verse 3 says, And his master saw that the Lord was with him. Other people will be able to see when the companionship of the Lord is there. And in this coming year, people will see. They'll see that you are called by the name of the Lord. And they will see that the presence of the Lord and the power of the Lord and the provision of the Lord, everything is with you. And because of that, that you have is companionship. Everything you touch and everything you do will turn to success and prosperity in Jesus' name. And other people have been looking down at you before. And what do you have? What do you know? What do you possess? After all, you call yourself a Christian. And they say they are not Christians. And they even have more than you have. This coming year, that is going to change. I said, that is going to change. The people that said, who are you? Get away from there. They will say, please come near. I need you. I want to taste of the blessings of God in your life. You'll be a blessing to everybody in Jesus' name. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all that he did. All that he did. Everything. All that he did to prosper in his hand. Look at verse 23. Genesis chapter 39. Verse 23. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his son. That's still talking about Joseph. Because the Lord was what? Tell me out loud. Was with him. And that, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. That's why the Lord is saying, cling to the Lord. Stay with the Lord. And the Lord will make us to prosper in Jesus' name. You remember once again that that promise is based on the fact that you are faithful, that you are loyal, that you are devoted to Him. I stay with the Lord, I'll obey the Lord, I'll work, I'll live, I'll behave, I'll conduct my life according to the Word of God. It's as you keep to that. That's when that divine companionship and partnership will continue. First Samuel chapter 2. For Samuel chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 29, verse 30. For Samuel chapter 2, verse 29. 
Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice? Here yeah, God was talking to Eli. The Lord had given Eli the promise, I'll be with you, I'll make use of you, and what you do will prosper, and I will make your ministry in my kingdom to prosper. And you know, Eli took that for granted. Wherefore, kick ye at my sacrifice, and at mine offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honorest thy sons above me. That's dangerous. When the Lord says he's giving you his companionship and he grants you partnership, he wants you to exalt him above the children. Exalt him above your husband. Exalt him above your wife. Don't let your wife be your God. Don't let your husband be your God. Don't let your child be your God. It says, now you honor your children, your sons above me, to make yourselves part of the chiefest of all the offering of Israel, my people. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, that be far from me. That's the Lord reminding us again that that partnership depends on our faithfulness, on our loyalty, on our commitment, on our consecration. That as the Lord is promising, He says, I'm going to be faithful to you. I'll walk with you. Then you also be faithful to the Lord. Yes, Lord, I'll walk with you too. I will bless you. Yes, Lord, I will bless you too. I will do what you want me to do. Yes, Lord, I will do what you want me to do as well. It is reciprocal. That means God doing it and you doing it. God keeping the covenant and you being faithful as well. We're looking at Second Chronicles chapter 26. Second Chronicles. We're looking at verse chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 5. Second Chronicles chapter 26, reading there from verse 5. Second Chronicles 26, verse 5. It says, And he sought the Lord, he sought God in the days of Zechariah. This is talking about Uzziah. He became a king. The Lord gave him a high position, a great privilege. And the promise of the Lord be with him. The promise was being fulfilled. And the fulfillment of the promise gave him prosperity and success and wealth and riches. And it was the blessing of the Lord, the prosperity of the Lord. In verse 5, and he sought God in the days of Zechariah. And had understanding, who had understanding? In the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him to do what? Tell me out loud to prosper as long as he sought the Lord, as long as we're faithful to the Lord, as long as the stage for the Lord, as long as was obedient to the Lord, the Lord made him to prosper. And then let's look at verse 16, verse 16. But when he was strong, but when he was successful, but when he was prosperous. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. And Azariah the priest went in after him. And was in force called that his eighty priests of the Lord that were valiant men. When he went to the temple of the Lord, he took loss into his son. You, you know some people like that. When they were poor, they were humble. When they had no job, they were humble. When they were praying for a wife, they were humble. When they were praying for husband, they were humble. When they were praying for children, they were humble. When they were praying for the breakthrough, for the blessing, they were faithful. But now that all the blessings have come, and the Lord has said, you are having what you have because you are with me. Stay with me. Keep the companionship and keep the faithfulness. As long as you are faithful, obedient to the word, the blessings will keep on flowing. But this man, when he became strong, then he felt 
What's the use again of just being faithful and loyal? After all, I've got what I'm looking for. Then he went to the temple and he offered incense. And a great man of God, the high, the priest, went in with 80 others, 81. And he came to him and said, man, this is not right. You cannot do this. Can you think of 81 people preaching to you? 81 priests, 81 pastors, 81 preachers of the word, courageous and valiant, telling him, don't do this. What was his attitude? Let us look at it in verse 19. Then Uzziah was angry, was wroth, and had a set sign in his hand to burn incense. And while he was angry, while he was wroth, you know, there are some people that excuse anger. They call it any other name. They say it's righteous indignation. And they say they know what they're doing. They're fighting for their rights. I didn't know what they are doing. It is, after all, I am king. But you know, when I was angry, you are angry with the preacher, angry with the pastor, angry with all these priests of the Lord that said, this is not the right thing for you to do. Those priests were keeping to the word of God, but Uzziah was away from the word of God. And then it says, while he was wroth with the priest, the leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord from beside the incense altar. I pray you will not be angry. I said, I pray you will not be angry. You will not be angry with the preacher. You will not be angry with the word of God. You will not be angry with your counselor. You will not be angry with the one that is directing you in the way of the Lord in Jesus' name. Partnership with the Lord demands that we'll stay with the Lord and keep faithful and loyal to the Lord. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 38. Hebrews chapter 10, we're looking at verse 38. In verse 38, now the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. By what? Tell me out loud. You know, the just will never live by fear. Never. Never. You'll not be able to keep the partnership with the Lord by fear. And you know, there are people that are too much afraid in their lives. They're not depending upon the promises of God. They're not depending on what Calvary has done. They're not depending on the fact that God has said, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. Stay with me and then everything will be all right for you. But they're living in fear. And because of that fear, this may happen and this may happen. And this may happen and because you don't know what will happen tomorrow. Because of that fear, that's what, why they do what they do. But it says if you are just, if you are righteous, if you are born again, if you are a child of God, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. That means then the partnership, the companionship is based on you going along with the Lord all the way through. Remaining with the Lord, abiding with the Lord. And you will not draw back in Jesus' name. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Of them that believe to the saving of the soul. We are looking at Psalm 46. Psalm 46, I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 46, looking at it from verse 1. We're still talking about the companionship of the Lord and what He says He will do for us when we abide with Him, when we stay with Him, when we walk with Him, and when we're close hand to hand and heart to heart and walking on the same journey with Him. Psalm 46, I'm looking at, at it from verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. Amen. Yeah. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, will we not fear. Anybody afraid there? I said anybody afraid there? The Lord is our refuge and our strength. Therefore, we will not fear. You will not be afraid in Jesus' name. 
Then it tells us over there, it says, we will not fear. And then it was just therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake, but the soil in thereof, there is a river, the stream whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. That's the partnership again. That's the companionship again. He says, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early your help will come i said your help will come but remember remember faithfulness faithfulness and the faithfulness begins you know even from now you'll be faithful from now i said you're going to be faithful from now on you know, it's the faithfulness in those little, little things, in the small scene, the Bible study, the Sunday worship, and then the Thursday miracle revival hour, and everything the Lord is calling us to, and He says, if you are faithful, and then obedience to the Word of God, everything the Lord is teaching us, everything we have committed our lives to, He says, it is that faithfulness that will make Him to help us that right early. Look at that verse 5 again. God is in the midst of her. God will be in the midst of us. In the midst of your family. In the midst of our church. In the midst of every local church. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3. We're reading from verse Three. Amos chapter 3 verse 3 In Amos chapter 3 verse 3 It says, can two walk together Except they be agreed Can two walk together Except they be agreed The Lord is saying the partnership Is based on Agreement The partnership with the Lord Is based on agreement When he says repent, Lord I agree when he says, I want righteousness, I delight in righteousness, Lord, I agree. When he says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord, Lord, I agree. When he says, shall you see power, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, Lord, I agree. When he says, one man, one wife, until death do you, but Lord, I agree. can you walk together? Except if they agreed, it is in that agreement with God, the word of God, the ways of God, and everything the Lord demands, it is that agreement that will bring that companionship and partnership, and the power of God will never fail in your life in Jesus' name. A good, good amen. amen. Point number three now, the purpose of divine companionship. Well, look at the promise. He's giving us the promise, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll abide with you. I'll stay with you. Through the waters, through the flood, through the flame, through the fire, I'll be with you. The promise. They will look at the partnership. He'll stay side by side with us. And whatever work we're doing, he'll make it to prosper. As long as we keep that divine partnership and companionship. Now I want to look at the purpose, the purpose of divine companionship. And this purpose will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Give me a good, good amen there. Genesis chapter 28 verse 15. Genesis chapter 28. We're looking at verse 15. And behold, I am with thee. Behold, I am with thee. And will keep thee in all the places whither thou goest. That's the purpose. That's the purpose. I am with you. And I will keep you in all the places where you go. And I will bring thee again into this land. The Lord says, He'll be with you. And when you come back next time, you are coming back with a lot of testimonies in Jesus' name. You are going back to your place of work and the Lord will go with you. You'll meet the promotion there. You are going back to your homes and you meet the peace of God in that home. 
and you're going back to your community in that community all the blessings the lord has given you here everything you have prayed for you'll find the answer when you get back home in jesus name the purpose of that divine partnership and companionship. The purpose is so that it will be with you everywhere you go. And then it will bring you back again to this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. That's the purpose. I will not leave you until I make sure everything I told you, everything I promised you, everything I presented before you, I accomplish everything. I will not leave you until I have done, until I have accomplished everything I spoke to you of. That's the purpose of that divine companionship. We're looking at Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. We're reading from verse 5. Joshua chapter 1. Reading from verse 5. The purpose why God says, I'll be with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And I'm going to be your companion for the rest of your life. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee. All the days of thy life. That's the purpose of the divine companionship. That no matter what enemy may try to confront you and stop your journey, he says that no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. Be strong. What kind of courage? What kind of courage? Of a good courage. For unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, and that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not, to, to, uh, turn not from it to the right hand, or to the left. Everything you have heard in the word of God since you became a believer. Everything you heard from the word of God since you started following the Lord. Everything you have heard since you started having quiet time. Everything you have heard since you started reading the Bible by yourself. From the very basic salvation to the time of sanctification and to the Holy Ghost baptism and to the responsibility of the believer and then getting prepared and watching and praying so that you will not miss the rapture. Everything you have heard, you will not turn to the right and you will not turn to the left. And that's why if you're going to have the companionship with you and the purpose for which God has called you, if that is going to be intact without anything going away from it, you will not turn to the left or turn to the right. That thou mayest observe, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. That's the purpose of the companionship, that you will prosper whithersoever, everywhere that you go. Look at verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. When are you going to meditate on the word of God? Only on Sundays? When? Day and night. Don't meditate on what your enemies say. Don't meditate on what society says. Don't meditate on what even friends, ignorant friends that don't know the Bible, don't meditate on what they say. Don't meditate on what backsliders say. And don't meditate on what even some new converts that don't know their left from their right, you have want to be teaching them. Don't meditate on what they say. Don't meditate on what your persecutors say. But you meditate on the word of God. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have what? Again, good success. All I want is good success. I said all I want is good success. Which one do you want? Bad success. There is bad success. 
a man making all the money that he wants to make, he wakes up early in the morning, no quiet time. He rushes to the place of work, working and working and working. He's getting money and getting money. No attention to the wife, no attention to the children. He gets money, his home is broken. Bad success. A person that is running after certificate, certificate, education, education, abandons the work of God. Abandons what the Lord has committed into his hand. He gets certificate. And he gets promotion in the place of work. And then he loses the privilege of serving the Lord. Bad success. A person that is running after this, running after this, and after that, and then eventually he breaks his leg. Breaks his heart, breaks his brain, breaks his bones. His life is broken, but he has money, and the money is useless. Bad success. But when God gives you total success, balanced success, your spiritual life successful, your physical life successful, your family life successful, your personal life happiness, your personality, all together, good success. I pray God will give us good success. Not be like these people run here and there. No time for God. No time for their families. No time for any good thing. Only money, money, money. They even have the money they cannot eat. They cannot sleep at night. Bad success. Look at that verse again. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. You will prosper. I said you will prosper. This coming year will be a year of prosperity for you in Jesus' name. And then thou shalt have good, good what? Pastors, listen to me. Good success, pastors, good success, overseers, good success. And you know, sometimes uh, overseers and pastors or preachers may think it is great, great success that God has given you a congregation. But then you have invitation here, invitation there, invitation there. And then you are here and all over the world. And then before you are back, the whole congregation that God is going to ask you a question about, the whole thing is scattered. And although you have success overseas and got success everywhere, the primary assignment is God. But success. But the Lord wants us to gather ourselves together, gather your mind together, gather your life together. And the thing He has given you to do, you succeed there. That's what you're going to be rewarded upon. And as some workers in the church, He has given you this particular assignment. And then you leave that, you poke nose into this, into this, into that. And God is not going to ask you about those that the one he committed into your hand. You're not facing it. And then you are succeeding in all the other areas that is none of your business. That's bad success. But the one that you have, the one he committed to your hand, and the one he said, take care of this man. If this man be lost, your life will go for it. And as I was busy here and there, he was gone. Busy here and there, bad success. I will not have bad success. I said I will not have bad success. You have good success in Jesus' name. Give time to your family. Take care of your family. Give time to your local church. Take care of the local church. Give time to your personal life, personal development. And that is when you have a balanced thing which is called good success. Verse 9. Why not commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. This coming year will not be a year of fear. I said, this coming year will not be a year of fear. Anybody that makes you afraid, don't respond to them. Fear will ruin your life. But this coming year, we're going to live by faith. And we're going to live by love. Faith and love. Faith and love. Faith and love will conquer the world. 
I said, faith and love will conquer the world. I want somebody who is bringing something out of, you know, his mind, his attitude, and say, hey, that is fear. That's the old, old instrument. That's fear. And the Lord is saying, fear not, fear not, fear not. If the Lord is telling you not to fear, and you fear, that's disobedience. Fear nothing, and fear none, and live by faith. And that's what the Lord said, have I not commanded you? Be not dismayed. And be not afraid, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. He will be with you in Jesus' name. And now in Acts of the Apostles chapter 18, Acts of the Apostles chapter 18, I'm reading there from verse 9, Acts chapter 18 verse 9. The Lord spake unto Paul in the night by vision. Be not afraid. And the Lord is saying the same thing to you. Blessings will go before you. The goodness of the Lord will go before you. You are not going to be afraid of any Pharaoh, any Nebuchadnezzar, any Herod. Because the Lord is greater than them all in Jesus' name. Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee. And no man shall set on on thee to hurt me, for I have much people in this where your much success is in this city. Your much prosperity is in this city. Your much success and your much prosperity and your much, much achievement is in this city. You'll get it in Jesus' name. That district where you are, that's where your prosperity is. Don't run away. Stay there, stay there, stay there. You are going to be prospered there in Jesus' name. Don't pack to another district. Prove the Lord. Stay where you are. And because he said, I have much people, much success, much prosperity. Where? Where? You know, there are some people that I don't know whether my healing is here, whether my children are here, whether my wife is here, whether my husband is here. Everything you will have is in this city. I said it is here. The commitment we are making to the Lord this coming year is that we are going to stay where the Lord has put us. Nobody will drive you away from this church. I said nobody will drive you away from this church. Your joy, your happiness, your prosperity, your success is here. I have much people in this city. I will see them. I said I will see them. Then in verse 11, and he continued. Because God said, stay there, stay there, stay there. Because of that, he continued. There a year and six months teaching the word of God among then, anybody wanting to continue here? Anybody wanting to continue? I said anybody wanting to continue? Anybody wanting to continue? Anybody wanting to continue? Are there tired people there? Discouraged people there? Downtrodden people there? I cannot do it again. Anybody there? Who are you? The people that continue. I said the people that continue. I said the people that continue. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. That's me. I said that's me. I said that's me. He that, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely, surely, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. On thy swing shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday, a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. It shall not, it shall not, it shall not, 
go everywhere you need to go. It shall not be the place you need to be. It shall not stand courageous anywhere you are. It shall not live in your community. Don't abandon your house because of anybody. Because of somebody is threatening you. All they do will not come near you in Jesus' name. But it shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. Go to the right, go to the left. There shall no evil befall thee. In the city, in the village, there shall no evil befall thee. In the town, on the road, there shall no evil befall thee. In your district, local church, in the central church, there shall no evil befall thee. In your family and among your friends, among your neighbors, there shall no evil befall you. When you go to the market and when you are staying in your house, there shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any, any, any plague come near thy dwelling. For he will give a singer's charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou touch thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. You, you will tread upon the lion and upon the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall not trample under thy feet, because they have set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high. I will set him on high. The next time I see you, I will see you up there. The next time you talk to me, you are talking about your promotion, about your exaltation. Because something good, something good is coming upon your life in Jesus' name. I will say to my heart, because he has known my name, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him. I will be with him. I will be with him in trouble. No trouble will be able to overcome you in Jesus' name. I will deliver him and honor him. With. 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 I will see you again. I said I will see you again. And you will see me again. What kind of life are you going to have? When you are pregnant, you'll deliver. You will not die in childbirth. Your children will not die prematurely. There will be no miscarriage in your life. Your competitors will not take your life. The people who are selling the same market, they will not take your life. When you have money, you will enjoy your money. Have wife, you enjoy your wife. Have husband, you will enjoy your husband. Everything you have, you will enjoy. Nobody will envy you and say, why do you have that? Why do you have that? Everything you have, you are going to enjoy. Long life. Long life. Stretch out your hand. Stand up before me. And I say long life and receive it. Stretch out your hand. Stretch out your hand. Stretch out your hand. Stretch out. Long life. Long life. Long life. With long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Tell the Lord I receive. 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 Long life, long life, long life, long life, long life. It's yours. It is yours. The Lord is with you. The grace of God is with you. His goodness is with you. His power is with you. His authority is with you. His promises are with you. His goodness is with you. His righteousness is with you. His holiness is with you. His companionship is with you. His redemption is with you. The protection is with you. Long life. Long life. Long life. Long life. Long life. You've got it. I'll see you again. I'll see you again. I'll see you again. 
I'll see you in your blessing. I see your prosperity. I'll see your success. I see you in the goodness of God in your life. I'll see you and your new wife. I'll see you and your new husband. I'll see you and your new children. I'll see you and your miracle possession. I'll see you. I'll see you for the blessing of God in your life. And you will enjoy your blessing. You will enjoy your blessing. You will enjoy your blessing. Nobody will take that blessing away from you. And with long life will I satisfy thee. And show you my salvation. It has come already. It has come already. It has come already. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. I said, Lord, thank you. I will abide. I will abide. I will abide. I will not be afraid. I will abide with my sanctifier. I will abide with my healer. I will abide with this companion. Everlasting companion. Eternal companion. The permanent constant companion. I will abide. And then my healing will remain. And then my deliverance, my dominion will remain. I will abide. I will abide. I will abide. I will not backslide. I will meditate on the word of God. I will not meditate on the word of the enemy. To observe and to do. To observe and to do. Everything the Lord has commanded. I will abide. Righteousness and holiness. Righteousness and holiness. Righteousness and holiness all the days of your life. And it's in that abiding, that abiding, that abiding. That it says, no evil will come to you. No plague will come to you. Then it will give prosperity. And then it will give success. Good success, good success, good success. Then they'll give the miracle. Then they'll put you with the signs and the wonders. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Receive everything. Accept everything. Receive everything. Enjoy everything. And say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. For what you said you will give. And I know you are giving me everything now. It will follow you home. Follow you everywhere, abide with you everywhere, stay with you everywhere. Give your life to Him completely. Don't look bad, don't look this way, don't look that way. And just say, Lord, I'm following you. Lord, I'm following you. Lord, I'm following you. Because there is a companion that never fails. No more barrenness again, you have that companion that never fails. No more joblessness again, you have a companion that never fails. No more tiredness again, there's a companion that never fails. No more weariness again, there's a companion that never fails. And there's no sorrow anymore, no sadness anymore. There's a companion that never fails. There's no depression anymore, there's a companion that never fails. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. What your eyes have never seen, you'll see in the new year. Something unexpected is coming your way. Something beautiful and wonderful is coming your way. From this minute and from this moment, and into the new year, you will not just have the companionship, you will feel the companionship. And his blessing will be innumerable, uncountable, inexhaustible in your life in Jesus' name. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
that preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will abide, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. forever. Amen. You are blessed already. I said you are blessed already. Let me just bring a confirmation of the, and seal it up. And your life is up. And your family is up. Your success is up. Up, up, up. You will go in Jesus name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless your name today. You have taken us from the bunny bush all through the highway to the promised land. Now your people have arrived in the promised land. Lord, I pray the milk and the honey will flow into every life in Jesus' name. The sorrows of Egypt will be forgotten. The suffering of Egypt will be forgotten. The sickness of Egypt will be forgotten. The oppression of Egypt will be forgotten. The yoke of Egypt is broken. The bondage of Egypt is forgotten. Now your people are in the promised land. I pray, Lord, all the abundance of the promised land will be theirs in Jesus' name. The angels of the Lord will surround you. The protection of the Lord will be upon you. The provision of the Lord will be in your life. You'll go from success to success. You'll go from prosperity to prosperity. And any time we see one another, you have the joy and the testimony of your life in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray every blessing you have given, every blessing that the people have not even asked, shower it upon them in Jesus' name. The coming year will be a year of showers of blessing. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing. Confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, the best has now come. And your people will enjoy the best all the days of their lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, and everybody said, tell everybody by your side, I've received my miracle.